welcome back everybody. Uh, as you can tell, we're in a car yard and that's because another thing that people often struggle to figure out what, where do you start, where do you end, um, it has to do with buying your first car. There's so many things that you need to take into consideration and that's what we're about to talk about. We're at Winsa Motors, which is on uh, Kiambu Road and I've got Regan Kibugi, who's the MD and he's been dealing with cars for 15 years. Welcome. Thank you. First things first, what are the what are the many options available? What are the options available rather for someone who's looking to purchase a car? What are the different ways that they can do that? First of all, there are many varieties. Yeah. So if somebody is looking, it, it has to go with the budget, okay. what somebody wants to buy okay. uh, to spend on the first car. Yeah. Uh, many first time buyers, you'll find they want uh, an economical car. Okay. something easy to maintain yeah and so would uh, that be like a second-hand car yeah second-hand car okay yeah newly imported okay yes. newly imported yes second-hand second-hand car. car yeah so that's what most people go for yes that's what they go for interesting yes. so why not the option of a second-hand car that's locally available many will shy off from them because of uh, mechanical issues because uh -huh. uh, they're not sure how the car has been used uh, locally okay but they are more comfortable that, uh, on a car that has been used out of the country. Okay. Yes. And what about uh, showroom? Uh, going into a showroom and buying your very first car, mileage is at like zero or like one kilometer. Is that an option that many first time buyers uh, mm, take? Not quite because of the price. Eh? Yeah. Uh, they're quite uh, expensive out there. Yeah. I okay. think uh, then the cheapest car you'd find in the market right now, yeah. uh, it's a VW Polo, the yeah. one they're doing at Thika, yeah. and it's going for 1.7 million. Oh. So you'll find many buyers, they don't have yeah, that. Yeah, especially kind of for first time. Yes. So what are the things that one should consider um, or should be looking out for? How do you know that this is a good quality car and not something that will break down in a few months? Uh, first, the mileage. Okay. You check on the mileage. What are the numbers that we should be looking out for? Um, mileage below 80,000 kilometers, yeah. that should be a good car. Eh? Okay then you when you're buying a newly imported car yeah. you check on the import papers you okay. should ask the dealer to give you the import papers uh -huh. so that you can check the grid the auction grid when the car was bought in japan or any other country and what does auction grade mean auction grade is the rating eh? okay so i'll i'll give you an example yeah. of how they go uh, a car between grade 4.0 yeah. and 5.0 that's a very good car Oh. If you buy a grid 2.0, 2.5 or 3, yeah. it might have mechanical issues uh -huh. or it's not that clean. Okay. So I'd advise many buyers to buy cars from grid 4.0 onwards. Okay. Yes. Uh, and what are some common mistakes that people make when it comes to this process? Uh, the process of purchase, yeah. that is. It. Yeah. Uh, many will just rush to buy the car from the looks. Aha. Uh -huh. So, for instance, yes. that uh, beautiful red. It's a Mustang. It's a Mustang. Okay. Yeah. Mustang. Yes. Oh, it looks so good. Yeah. So, you see it, you think, wow, I yeah. want that car. Yes. Um, but you haven't, you haven't done what? The you mistake there would be. You need to bring a mechanic before you buy a car. Okay. Let him check for you. And uh, you can do a road test. Uh -huh. And uh, check also the papers. That car might look very beautiful, yeah. but it has a problem with the engine or yeah. gearbox and all that. Great. So you will come and you hurry and you buy, yeah. it will be a problem for you later. Okay. Yes. And so legally, yes. what are the documents that you would need to have in order for you to be, um, you know, be able to purchase a car with ease? Uh, you'll need the logbook. I think logbook? that is the main thing. The main eh? thing. The main thing. When you're purchasing a car from a dealer, ask for a logbook. Uh, so that when you're doing the transaction, you know after the sale, you'll get the original logbook right. and transferred to your name. Right, because logbook um, affirms that it does actually belong to the person who's selling the car to you. Yes. Because that's another, th I guess, many ways people, people, that's another way that people can be conned. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, so what's the process of, of actually importing a car? If you were to break that down, do you, how do you then start getting a logbook from there? No, no, no. You'll not get a logbook. When you're importing a car, okay. let's say through me, yeah. you will just come to my office. We go to the websites together. Okay. We choose according to the variety you want, the yeah. color, the specs, all that. Yeah. Then uh, we will send money. Let's say, for example, if it's to Japan, yeah. you will have to wire money. Yeah. We do a TT to Japan. Yeah. Uh, then uh, Japan, a car from Japan or even UK, 
should be in the country within 30 to 45 days, oh. maximum 60 days. Eh? Okay. So once we send the money, and yeah. most uh, dealers in Japan or UK, they'll ask for like 70% of the cost of the car. Okay. So once uh, they ship the car, uh, before they send you the import papers, yeah. uh, you'll have to clear the balance with them. Okay. Then we'll receive the documents, then the car will arrive to Mombasa, uh, then we'll engage a clearing agent, give him the paperwork, then uh, you pay the taxes. Yeah. Uh, once you pay the taxes, the car will be registered and will be out of the port. Okay, so in, in total, that process could take like how long? From the day you walk into your office yeah. to the day you receive your car keys and, and everything? Uh, 30 to 45 days maximum. Oh, yeah. Oh, including like even like clearance and, and yeah, everything? Yeah, everything. 45 uh -huh. days maximum. Okay. Yeah. And would you say it's important to, you, to have an agent um, involved, someone like you? Um, during that process? It is important because we found cases uh, many people just going uh, online and trying to purchase without doing the due diligence mm. and they buy from corn men in the other countries. You just send your money to people that you don't know out there and uh, your money disappears. You hard earned yeah. money. Yes. Oh, so it's good when you come to me you can always come and ask yeah. in case right. anything goes wrong. Yeah? Okay. You can actually came, come and claim your money from me. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. so because you've, I guess, oh, okay, I, that's I, actually I, like a, yes, an advantage I know to you. I have my dealers in the other yeah. side, so I know your money will be safe. Okay. Yes. So we touched on uh, showrooms for a bit uh, earlier. And so one of the downfalls is that it's very expensive. Yes. But see, I've been saving for so long and I want to treat myself to, a, to my 30th birthday. Yes. What, what, what would you say? are some of the advantages of going into a showroom and picking up a brand new car? There are, there are lots of advantages. You'll yeah. be the first one to drive that car. Yeah. It's brand new, mm -hmm. uh, so they give you warranties, because mm -hmm. uh, second-hand cars, we don't give warranties. I, even if I have to give, I'll give maybe six or one month, one year, one year warranty. Yeah. Yeah. But when you buy a car from a showroom, yeah. they'll give you the warranty, like three years or 100,000 kilometers. Yeah. Yes. Regan, what are some of the common um, cars and makes of cars that people will go for when they're buying their first car? Uh, they'll go for uh, the low CCs, eh? okay. the low capacity engine that yeah. is uh, between a thousand to two litre maximum. Okay. Yes. And, and why is that? Because they're fuel efficient. Okay. Yes. And they're easy to maintain also. Yeah. yeah. yeah and they're affordable. Uh -huh. yes. I heard it's, it's important to also perhaps consider um, how easily available spare parts are. Yes, um, yes. Is, would you say that's of importance or is it like... It is of importance. Yeah. Yeah, because you don't want to buy your first car and the cost of uh, maintenance is quite high and you'll not get the spare parts are locally. Okay. You'll have to import. Okay. But when you buy like a Toyota, a Nissan, the, the parts are available. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say it's important to consider the resale value as well? Yes, it is. It is, it is of importance. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to buy your car, the fast car very expensive mm -hmm. and after two years you want to dispose it, then you don't get value for money. Okay. Yeah. For example, you buy a car for two million, yeah. then when you want to sell it after two years, you'll yeah. be selling it 400,000. Then it, it will hurt you. Yes. But at the end of the day, a car is never, um, a, I guess, an investment. Yes. But if you are to buy and spend a good chunk of money, yes. you might as well just find the thing that, the, the brand or the make that has the least amount of uh, what depreciation. depreciation yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so what are some examples of brands that you would advise for someone who's looking to buy a first car? The Toyota. Okay. Uh, Toyota, they have a wide range from the Toyota Vids, Toyota Axios, Toyota Premio. Mm. Uh, Toyotas are, are, are good cars. Nissan are also good cars. Eh? We also have the Suzuki's, uh, the Honda Fit, mm. yes. Okay, yeah. so I guess it depends on budget and yes. also I guess someone else's taste. Yes. Um, so Regan, what are some of the like top three questions that you'll hear from someone who walks into um, uh, Windsor Motors for the first time looking to buy their first car? The top three questions that you often hear. One, which is uh, the most fuel efficient car? Fuel efficient. Yes. Because fuel is going up, ladies and gentlemen. It's yeah. going up. Uh, second, uh, as you say, they want the spare parts. They will always ask me which car will be more durable on the roads. I don't have to spend a lot of money on it. Yeah. Yes. You've been doing this for 15 years. 
What's the last piece of advice that you would give someone um, when it comes to making the very best best purchase for themselves? I, I always advise my client to take their time before uh, purchasing a car, do the due diligence, uh, shop around, uh, because they are prone to be conned out here okay. by people also exaggerating a lot of uh, markup on their cars. Eh? Uh -huh. So before you buy a car, do your due diligence, go to the internet, we have websites locally, you can check uh, the variety there. Okay. Yes. Okay. So yeah. Do your due diligence, better, better to be safe than sorry yes. and not rush. Because sometimes you get excited, huh? Because yeah. it's the first car yes. and you're like, I just want to get it. Yes. It doesn't matter, we'll figure it out later, but yes. better safe than sorry. It's better safe than sorry. All right, well, thank you so much, Regan. Thank you so much for visiting my place. It's, it's a pleasure. Again, it's on um, Kiambu Road. Yes. Easy to find. Easy to find at the junction of Ridgewood. Yeah. Yes. So if you're looking for a car, come check out Regan. I hope you liked today's show and that you learned something new about whether, you know, you're looking to buy a house or a ring or a car. And these are like really big uh, moments in your life, right? So you might as well just give it the, the sufficient amount of attention and, and detail and make sure that you're not making a mistake because they're also very expensive purchases. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow, 8 a.m. sharp. Adios.